My name is Emma Barber, and I'm a gynecologic oncologist here at Northwestern Medicine. Uterine artery sparing radical trachelectomy is a relatively rare procedure. This is a procedure that's done for women who still want to preserve childbearing but have a cervical cancer. We know that the cervix is intimately related to the uterus, and so the standard treatment was always to do a radical hysterectomy, which obviously leaves a woman unable to carry children. With a radical trachelectomy, we're able to basically remove the cervix with the tumor, as well as the parametria on the side and the upper vagina, um, while kind of cutting a margin between the cervix and the uterus itself. So for women who want to preserve fertility who have cervical cancer, obviously maintaining the uterus and its ability to carry a pregnancy is of paramount importance. And so preserving the uterine artery helps to preserve that blood supply, the ability to have a healthy pregnancy um, that grows well is probably related to that blood supply. Just knowing that that option is out there um, and that there is the ability to preserve the uterine artery, um, I think is, is something that's really important to know when taking care of um, young women with cervical cancer. Here at Northwestern Medicine, we do a lot of robotic surgery. Um, robotic surgery has really revolutionized how we um, provide G1 oncology care. So we're able to do really complex and radical procedures um, through little incisions with patients, you know, able to go home the same day or at least the day after. And that really is important for our patients, not only for their surgical morbidity, but if we think of cancer care as a continuum, your surgery has to interact with your adjuvant treatment, with your chemotherapy, with your radiation. The faster and quicker you recover from that surgery, the better patients do. And so surgical recovery is not only important for surgery, it's really important for cancer care. My area of research interest really focuses on how do we improve the recovery process um, from surgery so that people can get on to their adjuvant cancer treatment? And so one way that I'm doing that is using wearable devices, so things like accelerometers, you know, um, a Fitbit, um, a, a ring to, to measure temperature and heart rate to try to improve how we can detect complications early before they become a problem after surgery. And that's really all focused on helping patients recover better and do better so that they do better from their cancer treatment. So this recent study that we worked on, um, which used uh, natural language processing with machine learning to examine post-operative outcomes after ovarian cancer surgery, these techniques really um, fall under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. And so what we're doing with this study is we're basically saying we know traditional risk factors for complication after surgery. If somebody's older, if they have poor performance status, maybe they're gonna have more surgical complications. And what this did is we actually took CT scan reports and we had the machine learn on those CT scan reports to identify novel factors that are hidden in there that actually was able to predict post-operative complication or hospital readmission. And so this was really a novel way of finding essentially new risk factors that are unknown at this time by using artificial intelligence. The key thing in improving outcomes in G1 oncology is really to improve our surgical quality, to be innovative in what we're doing and really bring um, all of the benefits of technology to bear for our patients. And that includes not only doing, you know, cutting edge robotic surgery in the operating room, it includes, you know, using things like enhanced recovery pathways to help people recover better. And it, it includes improving our monitoring for people after surgery to help them um, do the best that they can and recover the best that they can.